Good morning, friends. Stacy Krolak here uh, with Sip with Stacy, and we good morning, oh. friends. Stacy, let's, let's get the echo off. Sorry about that. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We are on Sip with Stacy today, and I couldn't be happier to have Chelsea Kane, the the Michigan State President, on today. How are you doing, Chelsea? I'm doing good, Stace. Thanks for asking. Good, good. Thank you for being on Sip with Stacy today. We are so excited to have you on. And I just visited uh, Michigan uh, not too long ago. I mean, it feels like last night, you know, but it was two weeks ago already, I think. <laughs> Right. I can't believe it was two weeks ago. You, yeah, you visited us in Snowmageddon, so thank you for traveling. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> One of the strategic partners that's actually uh, sponsoring my campaign, uh, he said that he hails from Grand Rapids, and that's where he went to school, and he loves it. And so I was, I was showing him all the pictures. He thought, oh my gosh, I just love it there. He actually worked at the restaurant and bar in the JW Marriott. Oh my gosh, what a small town. That's so I funny. Know. I know, I know a lot of people from Michigan. Yeah. So um, today we're here to talk about leadership, um, but more importantly, taking a deep dive into leadership and finding about a leaders that are leading our council and how are they are living the mission, vision, and values. So um, I just can't wait to to jump in here and ask uh, you some questions here. And yeah, look at you're already getting comments. Rochelle's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> look at those cute glasses. I said, I know, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's talk about you might have to put it in the chat where you got those glasses because everybody's going to ask I think <laughs> yeah absolutely it's, they're my favorite glasses they are truly like my statement piece I have multiple pairs and these ones always I get the most compliments on these for sure most compliments yeah yeah I feel like they're they're realtor glasses yes they are <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. So let's talk about when you got into real estate. How long, how long have you been into real estate? So I got in when I was just a little baby. I'm, I'm, I was the youngest when I got in initially because I was 18, but it was about a little over 20 years ago now. So it's been a while since I dabbled in real estate. I started in Florida actually though. Oh, so, you did? yeah. So if I really, I mean, 20 years of being in you know, actually in real estate capacity, but assisting in just doing open houses was when I started when I was 18. Okay. So I had somebody that said, Hey, I think you'd be great at hosting an open house. And can you sit my open house for 150 bucks on the weekend? And I'm like, sure, I'd love to sit in, you know, cause those were not Michigan price points, but they were Naples, Florida price points. So they were at the million and up <laughs> range. So it wasn't bad to sit there all day. <laughs> Uh, I bet. Yeah. I was uh, recently down there at President Circle and my husband and I drove through there just to see the area because I had never been in there. Um, there's some McMansions down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, uh, and, and it's funny, it warps your vision because I would be in a house and people would come in. I'm like, it's only 1.2 million. And they're like, it's wait, it's only, <laughs> yeah. you know, you <laughs> It, it does. It starts you off in a different way for sure. And then coming back to Michigan and um, running businesses, I was always on the assistant side of things. And then I became a consultant and always still doing my, uh, you know, real estate business on this on, on my own, but uh, consulting on others and how to grow businesses is something I have a knack for marketing. So it's something that I am passionate to do. Yes. And um, I learned that you have a knack for marketing when I received your newsletter. So I sent that newsletter to our president, Marlene Gomez. And I said, look at this, like this lady's got it going on. I mean, you have a link to every single document, every single page, and it is beautifully done. And so, uh, yeah, I noticed it right away. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you definitely have a talent there. But OK, so let's go back to Florida. You're 18 yeah. years old, sitting open houses. Do you mm -hmm. have to have your license when you do that? I did not because okay. I didn't speak to the anything to do with real estate. I, I handed them, you know, I was just hosting the open house. So sure. it was like you hand them the flyer. And if they have any questions, you can answer what's on the flyer. But you couldn't dive deeper into it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but when I walked into real estate and the agents that I worked for had 76 listings. I mean, it was crazy. And asking for year renewals was not 
um, anything to blink eye at. We did year renewals. We did two year renewals. So it was an interesting time. That's for sure. A little bit different than today's time. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, that well, that's interesting. And so now you did the open houses there. You stayed there. So where did you actually get your license? Did you get that in Florida or did you get it in Michigan? No. So I got it in Michigan. I had went through all the schooling, but um, it was just like, like pay structure of, of things in Florida because I worked for two agents. So the pay would have been a little different if I would have been actually fully licensed. Um, so I ran their whole team. I did all their marketing. I did all of their, um, you know, financials, and then I did all their transaction management. So it was a really good, it was just a great experience at first, you know, when you're in it, you never realize what, like how it's building you and how you're growing through it. I mean, it was a lot of tough work. It was a lot of stressful nights and a lot of tears shed because it's real estate. So of course, for some reason we have to cry in it every now and again. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it definitely gave me my path, if you will. Like I, I liked supporting people. I liked being part of a team. I liked helping others see their vision and what their brand could be. And um, I was part of all of that transition with my two agents and they were top agents in Naples. So I'm just super grateful for that experience, which is awesome. And then I moved to Florida, I moved back to Michigan again for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, that was your path, you know, that, that yeah. was your path and you dipped your toe into the pond and you, you probably, that's where you fell in love with real, real estate, right? Yeah, it's one of those things where I'm, I guess I'm blessed to say this is really the only thing I've really known. So mm -hmm. I grew up in the real estate world and it's just, it's exciting because it's challenging. But for me, it was always something that stimulated your mind. Every day was a little different, even though like structure and processes are the same. Mm -hmm. Every day was slightly different because you're dealing with other humans and other agents and just you know, kind of melding all those personalities together and figuring out how to navigate your way through it. So it's it was it was definitely a fun start to my career for sure. Right. And, and to your point about every day being different because uh, every transaction is so different because every client is right. And it's usually mm -hmm. 30 to 45 days. It's so different. But when I, you know, the longer you're in the business, you realize the spectrum of things you can do. There's so much that you can do in this industry. Like mm -hmm. you could jump around, like you don't, you know, you could be the agent that's just going out and showing houses, or you can go through the whole process, or you can be behind the scenes doing marketing, or be the leader of the team, you're the managing broker. And so that's what I love because really there's so many faucets to this. If you if you do kind of get like a little, you know, tired of one, you can jump over and do something else. So really flexibility, I would say in this job is pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, I, I think at 19, I was the, the, uh, um, chief operating officer is what I called my, you know, it's, and that's why part of what I loved about real estate is because you, my, my agents at the time, they were like, I don't care, whatever you want to call yourself, call yourself it. And it's, it was an interesting perspective because, you know, being the COO, <laughs> right? I thought it was comical at the time because obviously I was so young, but there was power in those titles. So, and I loved real estate for that because it really could give you this flexibility of you can be whatever you, what do you want to call yourself? Call your, you know, do that. And it's interesting. It does give you a ton of flexibility, which is great. Right, right. I know I, I, when I, when I talk about real estate compared to some of the other businesses I've done, I'm like, you don't realize how in control you are with real estate. You can work as much as you want. You can work as less as you want. You don't have to answer the phone if you don't want to. Right. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's so controlling. I mean, you really control every area of it. It's not like a, like, like if you have clients that are showing up and you have a restaurant, you have to work when they come in, you know, right. you know they dictate when you have to work. Right. Yeah. And so that's why I love, you know, love real estate because really you are in complete control. You decide what kind of paycheck you want, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think most of us are slight control freaks on, on some, some <laughs> level. Right. But we also have a hard time with saying no to things as, as well, because 
you know, I, I love the old adage is you can control your schedule, but really, I mean, I'm a relationships based person and agent and everything I do, I'm focused on relationships more so than that. So it's, it's not strange for me to have like a two and a half hour, you know, listing appointment. It's just, I know my strengths and my strengths are not like being able to be in and out in 30 minutes. I love that, but I just am like, okay, are we going to braid braid each other's hair next? What are we doing? Like, what should we do today? <laughs> I'm normally rearranging furniture day one. <laughs> day one. <laughs> I love it. Let's start, let's start staging the house right now. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay. Now talking about relationships and that is one of your strengths. I did witness that when I was at your state meetings. Okay. I saw the relationship that you have with your state line. So let's talk about that because um, I could see complete support, um, having fun, laughing, but still taking care of business. So let's talk about how you've cultivated that and, and continued that. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that's important to me is that whenever we're pouring our heart into something, it's also pouring back into one another. And my biggest thing was like, we're all here to support one another. We, I never know what trials somebody's had in their day to day, you know, so I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do my best to lift them up and support them in any way I can. And I think it's also like cultivating this network of people that's surrounding you that all has strengths that you don't have. Um, and normally it's like finding people that, you know, you naturally flock to people that are similar to you. So like me, if anybody knows DISC, I'm a, I'm a ID. Um, I'm my, my natural style is a DI. So that means I'm super direct, but I'm very like social. Right. But my adaptive style, I'm an ID. So I'm so, the social one. I want everybody to enjoy themselves and have a good time. And, but also, you know, we're a volunteer organization. We want to be, we have to be taken seriously because it's what we're doing and how we're advocating for the council. But also the side note of that is, how can I support you today? And I think each one of like the line officers I'm super blessed to have is we are all, my kind of hashtag is, is lead with grace. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for all of us to look at one another as an advocate for their own personal journey and professional um, journeys as well. So for me, it's like, how can I build you up today? And I'm a very huggy person. So some people love that. Some people hate that. And I, I get it at all ends. <laughs> but I think if uh, just one of the things with our team, I mean, Jan that January meeting space comes so fast, right? Yes. right? So having that time and energy to spend a lot of time with one another while we're running our businesses and starting everything else. Like we didn't have much time up to that point. We did a few Zoom check-ins and we did a lot of things, but um, we've known each other over the years. And I think it's just so important to surround yourself with people that are like, hey, how are you doing today? And that's the first thing I ask you before we start into our business. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I can't take credit for it because I think like collectively we've all added this really supportive meld to just one another personally and professionally. And I'm, I'm grateful for that special sauce. And I think when any new team comes in, you get a different kind of sauce and it, it, that's what you need in that point time of your life too. So um I don't know if I answered the question specifically, but like, I'm just, I am really grateful for the human beings that are on my team and that have chosen to serve alongside of me. Right. 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 And, and being so cohesive, I saw the support I've known, you know, for example, Katie Weaver, she installed you. And I've known Katie when I was a national liaison, I came up to region two and went out to Mackinac Island when she hosted that uh, meeting. And, and so I've seen you seen Michigan over the years and Kelly Smith and, you know, Bethany Brokaw and stuff, but how you just love on each other and you're there to support each other. 
that shows through and through like people in the audience have the tone of what is going on and there's it is transparent and you know sometimes you think you're hiding it but you're not and so it is a beautiful thing when you see that because you all were supporting each other you were laughing you were having fun and you were doing business at the same time and so that's that it's a beautiful collaboration isn't it yeah i mean it really is and i think part of it it was an awakening for me a long time ago when I started in this leadership journey. You know, I, I looked up to so many people. I have a really great role models that um, I don't like, I never like to do the comparison thought, like I'm going to always put my own special spin on like what I can do. I look to others and I see, wow, that's a really amazing way they lead. Mm -hmm. And when I respect something, I'm like, that's that's how I would like to be spoken about when I'm outside of the room. So then it's putting those like tools in your toolbox to say, you know, how can I be in that same conversation? Like I want my name in that conversation alongside those people. And so I always call it like my personal board of directors. Like nobody actually knows if they're on my board of directors. Like I will not tell anybody like you're on my board of directors, but it's people that I respect and I want to take a little bit away from their personality and kind of meld it into my own because I just love the feeling that I get from them. So it's a cool, it's a cool thing. I love that. Your personal board of directors. Yeah. You need to coin that. That's a good hashtag. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's you know, a cool thing. I like that. That's really cool. You know, cause you know, you think of like, you know, Brenda Lee from your state, you know, how she makes you feel. It's, it's how people make you feel, how that leader makes you feel. That's mm -hmm. what you remember. You don't always remember the little side talk, right? It's how right. someone makes you feel. So that's wonderful. I love yeah. that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about who first tapped Chelsea Kane on the shoulder and said, you know what, will you follow me into leadership? Will you step into leadership? So let's, let's, let's go back to that. Yeah. So Sarah Lipnitz was the first person and she ended up, she does a ton on like the NAR. She started our net, our local networks or Birmingham, Birmingham Bloomfield network um, way back in the day. So she started it. And then I don't know, like, honestly, I told, I told her to the day, I was like, Sarah, I don't, she saw something in me that I honestly didn't see in myself. I mean, naturally, I think I've always been like a take charger, like, you know, let's do it. I'm like the first one when nobody's raising their hand. I'm like, all right, I'll take one for the team and I'll do it. Um, so naturally I always had that. Yeah. I, I love people. Um, but Sarah was like, Chelsea, you really should do this. And she was a great role model to have. And then also obviously like Katie, I knew really well, Katie Weaver, Jane Lowell, who does a lot and with the council locally. And then, um, was more so in like our Michigan Realtors line. Uh, they just really encouraged me to take a dive on something that I didn't know. I mean, I was I was one of those that start. I started at President Elect, oh, which okay. which is a crazy thought. But it was important to me to know, like when I do something, I do it wholeheartedly. So it's not like I just stuck in that role. I needed to learn everything. It's almost like a cram course of you have to know every, every role behind you as well from where you're supposed to be. Um, but I, I didn't, I questioned it at first, but then I, I was in this mantra of like, say yes to things. So I wanted to say yes to something. And a lot of it was, I had a speaking event and oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. So I'm so glad we're live. I had a speaking event and it was with 45 people and I'm used to small groups, totally cool in small groups. Yeah. And um, I went up there and the, the person who wanted me to do it, wanted me to do it like a Ted talk style. So I designed a whole presentation because, you know, I like marketing. I'm going through it and I could feel hot come over me. I started sweating. I lost my words, which is not normal for me. And I had like a mini panic attack because I just was so scared of, like, I was so prepared going into it. I mean, I felt confident and good. And then as soon as I hit the stage, oh my gosh. 
it was the, so part of my other why I said yes to leadership when Sarah tapped me on the shoulders is I'm like, I need to throw myself into the uncomfortable of not being comfortable of speaking in front of people I don't know. And, and I can't, it's mainly because I wanted to be like encouraging. I wanted people to walk away. I cared so much about it that it made me like terrified for some reason. Um, so I said yes to it because I knew this would put me on a platform in front of people that I had to speak in front of hundreds of people <laughs> all the time. Right. So, but yeah, Sarah, Sarah is a huge, I still look to her today just for her leadership. And it's, oh. it's really nice to have her. That's class. awesome. And that's awesome. And that's so many times, like when just speaking to your point about public speaking, you know, we grow when we're uncomfortable, right? So yeah. you knew you wanted to have that tool in your tool belt, right? Mm -hmm. So you put yourself into the position where you had to cultivate and learn how to do it. So, you know, another gift of women's council, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I credit the council to uh, so many things to be clear, like, I'm just very grateful for the, all the opportunities that I've had in this like journey of growth. And mm -hmm. if I didn't have the leadership challenges and the opportunities, because the, you know, you take part in both, right. You have, you come across conflicts, but it's understanding how to manage all that. And without women's council supporting me in that and giving me tools and people, right. right. To reach out to and say, how do, would you handle this? Um, right. it's definitely calmed me down too, like, which is so strange for me to say, like, I used to get really uptight about some stuff and, um, I don't have kids yet. So I feel like it's like women's council has taught me how to be more motherly in a way. I don't know if that makes sense, but, um, it, it has definitely calmed down my immediate reaction and made me take pause and think it all through before I have a response. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. I love that. And then, then I want to talk to the point about when you just said organizing and handling it all, because one of the things that I talk about is because I've, I've heard people say this before. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for my year of presidency to be up so I can get back to business and earn some money. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, don't say that. No, no, no. I said, we build our leadership line at the same time we reach our goals. And it's about putting systems in places. And like to your point also is women's council is this library of people where we can look to and say, okay, I see you in this position. How are you doing this? How are you juggling both? What systems are you using? And they share with us. So it's like, we have this library of knowledge within the council that we can reach out and ask. And so I love that because that's what you did, right? Because oh, yeah, you reached absolutely. out. Yeah. 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 I, I always find it interesting when, I mean, I, I don't, I think it was a, a old, a old kind of concept of like people that didn't do a ton of business got into these networking groups and it wasn't just the necessarily women's council, right? It's other opportunities. Yeah. Um, how could they afford to give back? Right. When, right if they have a thriving business. Most of our line is busier than most agents in the state. You know, we have a community of very successful agents and that's what we all are. Mm -hmm. um, I think the ability to learn how to juggle and like I'm a systems kind of gal. I like efficiencies. I used to do 145 deals a year up to 160 deals a year. That's a lot, right? Managing all of that stuff. And you learn how to put in efficiencies, but most importantly, what the council has provided me with is like looking out to girls in different areas and women and men in different areas and saying, hey, what are you using to make this so efficient? And I think that's, that's part of our collaborative nature of understanding like, I'm going to share everything. I'd share my listing contract. I'd share everything you want, like my listing presentation, my buyer's consultation, all that stuff. I don't care because I've created it. It's my, it's coming from my mind, but also when I explain it to somebody, I've added, a, you know, the, those things are fluid documents. They should be changing every year. They should be updated every year with new things that you've implemented into your business. But what's really cool is I've had so many people like Beth is a wizard on, on Google. I actually really hated 
Gmail for the longest time, just because like, it doesn't organize the way my brain likes it to be. I don't like the nesting of folders and all of that. I'm an outlook girl, but Beth is a wizard on Bethany Broca is a wizard on uh, Gmail. So she put in a lot of cool things with QR codes and like sourcing documents. And I looked at it and I'm like, wow, that's really efficient. So being able to pull from different people who are better than you in a different arena, you know, and actually a big shout out to Beth, because I'm going to quote her on something else too. She, um, we were just chatting about Lindsay Dykstra, who's my president elect upcoming, just awesome. I mean, number two in her company, she's incredible. Um, really, really just such a powerhouse. I'm super excited to see like what this year has like in store for her. But we were talking about how we're going up against different, um, you know, competition and obviously like, you know, people being like, it's not necessarily a presentation, it's the cost of your services, right? So how do you negotiate around those when somebody's asking you, will you do it for this percent? And Beth's like, oh, I have the great line, this great line. And she's like, you know, take it and ask, ask them, you know, what do you do for a living? And in this case, the guy's like, oh, I worked for Chrysler. And he's like, okay, that's great. Um, so if you have job A, if you have project A and project B, and somebody's going to pay you more for project B, which project are you working on? first. Right. And so it was interesting because she had just such a good line. So, I mean, I think it's how you utilize the resources within our council. If you just sit back and don't do anything, but if you ask questions and you're inquisitive and you want to know more and ask somebody, how do you say this? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you overcome this objection? No matter what state we're in, we're all going to have a different way of saying it. And so it's like asking more questions, right? It's right, sort of, right. Was, and what I love is like, if I share a technique with you, you're not going to take business away from me. You're going to only affect yeah. your sphere of influence and vice versa. So why not yeah. share and help each other, right? 100%. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I'm grateful for Women's Council, because I do think we are the most, I mean, obviously I don't have the stats on this, but I'm going to confidently, confidently say in my mind, we're the most collaborative community of, of agents and, and strategic partners that everybody's willing to give you a hand or help you with something, which is phenomenal. Even if you don't know them personally, mm -hmm. I just think that's such a cool culture of our, of our organization. I'm going to agree with you. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I think that's one, one of our magics, our ahas. And, um, and, and I, I, I found out about Bethany being such a wizard on Google because I was at CRS here in Phoenix a couple of years ago and we took Lee Brown's uh, speaking class together. Oh yeah. And yeah. so I said, we have a leadership Academy and, and we want to teach Google. And so she taught it and yeah. they liked it so much. They want her to teach like Google too now because they're like, it was phenomenal. So she is very talented in that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just little things that like, I mean, I could, I'm a, I just love education. So I like soak it up like a sponge. I mean, conferences, I'm always the one running from every class that I can possibly get into just because even if I could teach it myself, because a lot of the classes I could teach myself, but yeah. I'm just like finding out, wow, I really like the way they explain that. Or this is an interesting style of presentation and, you know, just looking at the feedback to, so you can be better at how you're doing your business and affecting change in your leadership team. Sure, sure. Uh, I love all that. I love the collaboration and the sharing of ideas and uh, just helping lift each other. So, I mean, that that's wonderful. So this is one of my favorite questions, okay? Were, were you born a leader, Chelsea Kane? <laughs> I mean, I grew up with three older brothers who like used to rip off my Barbie doll's heads and like, <laughs> So I think I was forced to like become my own little human, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. Like, that's a hard question where I think naturally growing up, I was inquisitive and, and kind, I guess I could say I had a little bit more of a spunk to me back in the day. My mom would say I was kind of mouthy when I was 16. Up until I turned 16, I was, I was not mouthy until I was 16. Um, 
but yeah, I think I fell into, uh, I think I was always like wanting to bring people along with me. So I guess, I guess from my experiences, it forced me into leadership and just always bringing somebody on my journey or like, not necessarily, I never went with the flow. I always was the person that said, well, like, why does this, why do we do this like this way? I always wanted to challenge, not to be confrontational, but challenge to be um, proactively engaged in like figuring out the understanding the why behind it and then saying, oh, is there a way that we could do this better? Like that was just always, I was rearranging my room at five years old because I went to Montessori and I guess it's like, if your house isn't in order, neither is your life. That's what they teach you. So I'm like, I was probably the only teenager with white carpet on purpose. Like, and I used to vacuum plaid lines into my carpet. I'm kind of a freak in that, that oh, route, but yeah. yeah. So I, I would say, uh, my mom probably didn't know I was born to be a leader when she raised me, but I was the only girl. So I think naturally I came into this role. I love that. You know why I love asking this question? Because I can see people just going in their mind back to their childhood and going through like, you know, all of the scenes and then coming forward. I just love watching, watching it work out. <laughs> yeah. Cause it was a challenge. I'm like, I don't know. Was I? <laughs> but sure. That's fantastic. Well, it sounds yeah. like you were, I sent my children to Montessori school too, and I love it. So I think it's, it's a great base uh, concept for life. So that's yeah. cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, uh, Chelsea, what is the best piece of advice that you have received uh, in your leadership from, from another leader? Ooh, the best piece of advice that I've received probably is to continue to be your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And every leader leads differently. And so if you lead... And that was part of like in my install, I was saying, you know, I was thanking the past leadership because to me, I'm not in such a sap, but I'm becoming more so the further you get in leadership because you realize everybody puts their own little twist and turn on what your organization is known for. And what I think is really awesome is that there's like a piece of them that lives on through that. So being your most authentic self, I think, is is something to always be mindful of. So mm -hmm. that was the best probably piece of advice because we can all look to others and want to like do that that way because it was successful. But if it's not organic to you, it's not going to be sustainable and it won't be it won't let other people be comfortable, you know, with with who they are uniquely. Right, right. It's I'm almost to your point. It's like it's an encyclopedia or it's a book of the legacy of leadership. When when someone leaves, everyone leaves like a, a page, right? Absolutely. Right. Can you talk about because this really touched me and I even shared it with my friends that are from Michigan when I got home. Uh, let's talk about the place where you had your state meeting. OK, yeah. what that was, because to me, that was the epitome of who we are. And I thought that was just so cool. It was super cool. And it was, I don't know, it was like stumbled upon, honestly. It was one of those things we normally are at JW um, for our, our January event because we go with Michigan Realtors. Um, so this year, though, the JW was taking some time to get back to us. I'm like, oh, we need to we need to get on this. And I came across this place called The Lit. And I was like, well, that's fun and trendy. Like I can have fun with something called the lit. But then I read their history and it was the Women's Liter Literacy Center. And it was the, the this group of women that got together because they weren't able to be involved and in, in learn in any um, professional setting because they just weren't allowed to be. It was back in the 1920s. 
Um, and so they created a building and a place where they can learn and grow with one another. So I was like, well, that is so in line with what our organization, <laughs> you know, so it just made sense to me to be around all this history. And they, they actually were founders in the Grand um, Rapids Library, and they did a lot back for their community, which I, I just thought all in all, that was something so cool to have organizations align that way of just these like powerful women that came together and built this beautiful building just to like read and to learn and to enhance their themselves. And so it was, it fell in line with what we are as women's council. Yeah, that was very special. I loved it. I even went on the back counter where you had the snacks yeah. kind of in the back there where you checked in. They had uh, brass uh, pl or like names of all the founders and I took pictures of it and brought it back and showed my family. I'm like, look, these are the women that stood up and started this literacy foundation and the center. I, I just thought it was so cool. Yeah, and it was important for me, Stace, because it's like, you know, getting to that sentimental fact of like, I took a page and I had in my little booklet of all the leaders that have served, you know, since it was since the 1940s, like we had the names, mm -hmm. there were a few years that were a mess, but I was like, these are, these are cool, amazing women that took on leadership. And you can imagine how different it was in their day. You know, so to have my name amongst theirs is really cool. I, I don't know. I just think it's, it's something that's awesome. And my mom would tell you, I'm not, a, so she's like, do you want grandma's dishes? I'm like, no, mom, I don't want grandma's <laughs> dishes. But now like I get it, you know, yeah. it's just, your name is amongst a ton of other amazing humans. And that's just cool. Right. And, and really to your point, like in 1920, did people even talk about leadership for women? I mean, probably not. So these women had to be so brave. I think a lot braver than us. I mean, they raised their hand and they, they were like said, we're going to do this, you know, yeah. when, when people weren't even letting them in the room. So I think the, the gumption, the courage, the drive had to be so powerful. And so I, Gosh, I would just love to be able to have witnessed that, really. Oh, I'm right there with you because it's, yeah. you know, you were probably, you weren't looked on too kindly by, you know, people don't like change. And I, I think that's something to be a trailblazer is, that's amazing. So I I, I think it's really cool too. I, I just, there's no other word I, I was to represent, I mean, I guess cool isn't the coolest word to use, but I'm, I'm going to say it's really cool. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to say it's one of the loveliest buildings that aligns with our mission statement that I've ever been in. I was like, yeah. Oh, th this hit it. She did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So kudos to you. Now let's Thanks. talk about your business. How did the women's council help your business? Uh, well, a ton. I use it in my listing appointments and buyers consultations, and I encourage always everybody to do so because I think there's power in saying that most likely somebody will know my name and understand, like, know my reputation. And I'm not saying that in a, like a boastful way, right? It's mm -hmm. I think there is that professional credibility that comes along to hanging your name. Uh, with this organization, mm -hmm. because we're not only saying we're the most educated, right? Because that's that's one of our pillars. We have, hang our hats on on really knowing our industry, but more importantly than pausing, right? So most people pause and say, "Okay, now I have to get my con ed." Where I think we as in, in women's council, we say, well, no, I don't want to just do the bare minimum. I actually want to know the things that we're on the forefront of and be able to understand that more. So when I'm in front of clients, it's so helpful because I say, look, I'm committed to education. I'm committed to knowing the things that aren't here yet. And that's only going to help you. Mm -hmm. And then also talking about just the community of agents that, um, you can call most people and say, Hey, do you know of Chelsea Kane or do you, have you done a deal with her? Mm -hmm. And 
normally with that phone game of they yes they'll know somebody so our offers do get probably accepted a little bit more because we have more rep of a reputation within the industry and it's nice like I use all of that and I want to say like hey if Stacy's going to write a listing on one of uh, or write offer on one of my houses like oh I know how she does business I know she's going to be ethical I know her clients are going to be more educated than people that that aren't in the council because she's taken the time to put in systems that educate her clients and she knows the right things to talk about with them. So it's that confidence too that comes along with our organization. And I think that's important. So absolutely, I use it and I encourage people to put it in. I have a resume. I mean, I always, you know, whether I'm any interview I'm on, any, any, I always say, I want you to know my, you know, my credibility as a professional and here's my resume. And it goes through everything that I'm involved in, um, all my education, you know, additional education that I have. And then I explain to them because it's different. Here's just my resume, right? But if you explain to them actually the meaning behind what you do, mm -hmm. it's important. Like, nobody really, if you just look at it, everybody's like, okay, you're on a board or you're on the, but if you explain to them the value that it can add to them, mm -hmm. that's important. I love that. I love that because you're not just selling the property. You're also selling yourself. So um, friends, anyone that's out there that's listening, if you're new in the business, this is a mic drop moment. Chelsea gives on her listing appointments, she puts in her resume of her education, of her community involvement, of everything, her stats and her business, because that is added value. And so she's totally transparent. I love that. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and a lot of people too say, oh, well, I haven't been in the business that long. So, you know, I'm not going to have all these things on my resume. I'm like, oh, no, we can, we can craft, like you can come up. It's not just jobless. Like I'm, I'm thankful enough and blessed enough to have been in this business a long time. So now it's crazy. But when I first started, absolutely, it would be about all of my drive about my, you know, just you can list personal traits. You can have personal testimonials about who you are to fill up that space with things of past history. And every, you know, I was a server. I loved serving. It was mm -hmm. like my favorite thing ever. I made so much money actually. So it was hard yeah. for me to get a real job, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. That's what they tell you. Um, but all of that, has added to my career and has made me better at what I do, like the ability to multitask for exactly. Instance. Exactly. So no, I, and I love that. I love that. So like, if you don't have a lot of, you know, designations on your resumes, friends, new agents out there, listen to what Chelsea just said, put your community involvement, put your goals, put things that you're working for, what you've done. I mean, just for example, like serving, I owned a bar, Chelsea, I know what they make. It yeah. is impressive. But the people skills, they say that servers and teachers are the best realtors because of the people Absolutely. skills, right? Yeah. The ability yeah. to read people. I mean, and that serves you in negotiation. I mean, there's a lot of things that if anybody has trouble formulating a resume, just call me and you, <laughs> you, you won't have trouble anymore. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chelsea. That's so yeah. nice. Okay. You're going to get a bunch of phone calls now. <laughs> hey, I don't mind. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Now let's talk about um, your community involvement. Are there any charities that are near and dear to your heart uh, that you are involved in? So I've done a lot with Women's Build for Habitat for Humanity. That's been one, you know, honestly, my, I wish one of my goals is like to up my charitable involvement. I've been so involved in like the real estate side of things. So our pack is near and dear to my heart because that's, but that's not charitable, right? That that's something that's protecting our industry, but mm -hmm. women's build, I like, but my husband's a builder. So that kind of aligns, but it's also watching them, you know, watching people go through the, like Habitat's a great, a great charitable institution just because they're preparing you for success. Yes. So you have to go through all these different educational, um, you know, classes in order to even be approved for one of their loans to get into the house that we just completely rebuilt and, and having that kind of like, Ooh, I touched that. Like I pound the, I pounded that hammer in that house so they can have a space for their family 
to grow and to become something. And now, you know, they're prepared with educational items that in most households, people don't talk about, you know, whether you're, um, you know, on the, on the lower side of a pay scale or on the higher side of the pay scale, I don't think anybody prepares kids really for, and granted, yes, I don't have children right now, so I can say this, right? But I'm speaking from like my personal opinion, like what happened to me personally, nobody prepared me for student loan debt. And I just said, yes, I bought a flat screen TV with my, with my student loan money. I was like, sweet. It was $4,600. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I'll do it. Cause you know, I just thought, oh, it's free money. Right. right so right. I think it's cool. I think what Habitat does is just so, so phenomenal. So my heart's really connected in that space. Um, but I do really, I have a soft spot for my, my elderly f- folks and I want to give back more in that, um, space this year. So I'm excited about that. I love that. I love that. Now you did touch upon a major investor. So let's talk about that. Yep. What level are you and why is it so important mm-hmm. to you? Yeah. So I'm a golden R and it's like my first golden R because it took me a while to get here. Right. It's, I mean, yeah. it is an investment. Yeah. Um, mainly I, I couldn't stand in leadership and not do it mm-hmm. and uh, because I'm passionate about protecting our industry. I'm passionate about protecting our property rights. And I'm not a huge political person. I I always tell everybody the only politics I talk about are property rights. So like I've remained neutral on on that front for the most part, but um, it's, it's all the stuff I didn't know. When I got involved in my association, I'm on the board of my board of directors for my local association and coming into that, and sitting and interviewing um, different council members. And it just, it was so interesting to me, all the things that we just think happen, you know, like Airbnbs, you know, somebody dictating what your property can be used for. And I know that's a, that's a sensitive subject, but it's like, you have the right to know, to, you have the right to say what your property can be used for. But then on the other side of it, it's like, actually whole city is wanting to do away with our signs. Yeah. So that's like, it's kind of important <laughs> to list the house for sale, you know? So, I mean, protecting every facet and those are obviously very light points, but I, our pack to me was something that the more I sat and because I was your minimum, I, I gave $15. Yeah. I was on my, so I was, did the minimum for so long, but that's because I didn't look more into, into it. I just said, okay, I'll give 15 bucks because I didn't, I didn't know. And honestly, I'm still learning more. I, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm still diving deeper to have a better cadence with like why our pack. Um, so I can actually help others get more involved. But I think for me, the important thing was understanding what it does for our industry and knowing that it's not this political charge that yes, we do back both sides. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're the biggest, (laughs) the largest part, you know, we're we're the largest, which is nice. We have a lot of um, clout. Yeah. And biggest trade commission in the nation. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like to think about and Brad Ward, um, and Brian Western, who are our public policy guys at Michigan Realtors, like the mind, like everything that they know, I just was like, I want to be smarter in that. Mm-hmm. So, and I can only be smarter in that if I knew, and I sat in those rooms and I had those opportunities to listen to people who are smarter than me on it. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I was like, I, I'm trying to up my contribution every year. I want to be like Lee Brown and have like the amazing bracelet, the most expensive bracelet that you will ever own. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's important if I'm going to sit here and say, no, we deserve the space. We deserve the credibility. We deserve to have the clout of being a realtor. Mm-hmm. I, I, that that's important to me and we have to be backing that. And our pack does that for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But I have a long ways to go, to be clear. Well, you know what? It's everybody working together, you know, and if everybody just give, gave, like you said, $15 to your point, we probably wouldn't even need to have our big pay structure that we do. (laughs) Right. 
but um, uh, it's advocacy. And one of the best um, uh, explanations I've ever heard was from a government affairs um, person, uh, Jeff Heap down in Tucson. He's not in Tucson. I think he's the new CEO in uh, Tennessee now. Um, I think he moved, but he talked about advocacy like a ship. And if we don't get in there and get involved and drive the ship, someone else will. And so that's why it's so important for us to be involved. And I, I love that that analogy because it's so true. It, and it's kind of like with any business, right? If you're not involved in it, someone else is going to drive it. So you've got to you've got to raise your hand and 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 get involved and, and at least do your part, right? It's collaboratively, yeah. all of us. So yeah. Absolutely. And that was actually RPAC's one of the main reasons why we continued to work in, in COVID as a state. Um, you know, Maureen Francis. <clears throat> bless her for being able to do all that, um, during our COVID year, but it was, it was, um, impressive that foot in the door, it helps to be able to have that and to be respected in it too. Right. Right. Yeah. I think we want to build the bridge of communications and relationships. So when something does happen, then we can negotiate. We don't have to build the, build the bridge because then yeah. you're, you're way behind the the eight ball. Right. Right. And we always want, you know, our political officials to be able to come to us and ask us questions. And that's mm-hmm. what happens that that line of communication goes to both both ways. It's not always us, you know, knocking on their door and telling them what our initiatives are, but they actually come to us too, which just shows that, you know, we have the, we have a lot of power yes. amongst us. Yeah, they they listen to us. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited because in May I get Hall of Fame. So I'm excited. Oh, thank you so much for <laughs> running your industry. I love it. I reached my goal. But we do have a question here. So yeah. Patty Gaskin in Florida says, um, if you have a lot of designations, how do you explain to your clients without being boastful? So my designations are just on the bottom. I highlight the purpose for them. And I speak to the individual. So not everybody is going to care. I mean, we always have to know who's sitting across the table from us. Right. So it's like, if I'm talking about ePro and nobody cares about, (laughs) nobody's that tacky, then I'm probably, I'm going to miss the mark. So I choose the ones they're all on there. And I think that's something that's important. You sat through the class, you absorb the information, but utilize your accreditations, if you will, which ones will be the most impactful to who's sitting across from you. Mm -hmm. Um, When I go through my resume, I never, ever, because this is one thing I forget who taught me this and I'm sorry, I can't acknowledge them, but I thought it was so smart because, you know, our, most companies, they have your own listing presentation and everybody just prints it off and then goes, oh, don't worry about You can read this page later. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things like my listing presentation is five pages plus my resume. So six pages, including my resume. Um, I, I, it, excuse me. I think you need to teach a class on that. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. I love, I actually, it's my favorite thing to do. So I would totally do that. <laughs> Um, but one of the things that I was taught is never just go, oh, you can read that later. Cause what you're basically saying is that none of what's on this page is important. So you do have to take pause with your resume and say, Hey, I want you to understand why I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm applying for the job, but this is why I'm the best fit for this job. Because really we are applying for the job and go through every single thing you have done. So I have like a little short um, bio about me that's like fun and funky, but then I have all my serious business and everything I've done. And, but pick out to you what's going to be the most impactful for who's sitting across the table. Or if there's an explanation, like I point out women's council because of my reach to other agents because of my professional credibility. So I'll speak to the, you know, I'm on the board of directors, but does that make sense for this person who's sitting across from me? No. Yeah. So, I'll, you know, I'll speak more to what's going to be most impactful for them. I hope that that helps. No, that that is so amazing. I hope everyone out there really got that. So touch upon what you think is going to connect with the client that you are, you know, um, you're going in for the interview that you're trying to get the listing. And that makes so so much sense. That's the disc profile right there. Yeah. 
Absolutely. You've got, you've got to use your knowledge, your tool belt to connect to them because you need to get this listing. And so I love that. I, I absolutely buyers love that. too. So yeah. I, you can't work with me if, I mean, even if you know me, even if my mom was buying a house, you have to sit through my buyer's consultation. You have to sit through my listing presentation, um, you know, conducting yourself as that professional up front and setting your standards, even with your personal friends and family, mm -hmm. make them respect your time more, but also take you you're taken a little more seriously which i think is important because you know i talk about my buyers consultations and like shoes and socks and everybody's like what's that i want shoes i'm like well wear slip ons <laughs> you you better wear socks because sometimes you'll have to slip them off slip off your shoes and wear slip off shoes like don't wear the boots that you know it took me an hour to put on because you're going to be taking those off unless i have the booties with me so those yeah. are just things like light things that we all think Everybody knows like ring video doorbells. They can hear you from 40 feet away. So when we're right. in the driveway, don't tell me that you want to do whatever it takes, Chelsea. I don't care. I want this house because most likely even they're, the, they're not supposed to be listening. But so it's little things like that, that we know, but how uncomfortable is it stays to come up to a door when you're showing it and be like, oh, there's a ring video doorbell shh, don't say anything. Like it makes it awkward or, oh, there's a baby monitor. So if you say it up front before you even get in any of those situations, it's so much easier life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Going back to being prepared, right? Yeah, absolutely. Be, be prepared, know, know your process, know your systems and think what is going to be more conducive of in a smoother uh, interview when you get there. And, yeah. and I love that you are, no matter who you're selling to or representing as a buyer, you are going through the interview process, whether it's your mom or whatever. So they understand yes. that you, this is your profession. This isn't your part-time job. This isn't your hobby yeah. that you, this is your full-time profession and you take it very seriously. I love that. So Absolutely. any new agents out there, listen to what Chelsea has to say. She's amazing. <laughs> very smart lady here. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. And so this is funny. So when we got on the, we always get on the phone, whoever I'm interviewing and I, and so Chelsea said, is this about, you know, how long is this? I said, <laughs> But I said, sometimes I've, we've been known to go an hour because these are good conversations and look where we're at. We are yeah. at an hour, <laughs> but I do want to ask you this question. What is your women's council? Why? My women's council? Why? That's a great question. My why is really about like inspiring others to see what I can see in them. My why is because somebody saw something in me that I necessarily didn't know. I didn't realize like how impactful you can be and how important um, leadership and your roles are. And I think it's interesting because this is like, it's a whirlwind when you're in leadership, you just, you're, you're going through the roles of things, but I think intention is so key of like, so I guess for me, it's, it's giving back to others is my why. Mm -hmm. But the reason for that is because you never know the impact that you can have in somebody else's life. And it was interesting to me. I actually, I'll, I keep it here. Because um, my friend Wendy, she's a, she's a new um, leader. She's a new president of a network. And I had Sarah Lipnitz on at my last event. And I was telling her, like, all the things that you forget to tell people, like, you were just so impactful in my journey. And, like, I didn't tell her any of that, you know. So this was, like, my time to highlight her. Mm -hmm. And it was so sweet. And this made me cry. But I keep it on my desk it's a, she gave this book to everybody it's called the power of a penny but and she gave it to me because she knows I like to read but inside she wrote Chelsea you inspire me more than you could know you are my Sarah like you're my Sarah my my person was Sarah Lipnitz who got me to the next level mm -hmm. and I don't even know what like like those words so I guess that's that is my why to to help other people see their greatness and then get them to share it because really that's how like we grow as a community and just so so that's and, and it's so cool to like see 
I mean, I know that's my why I've always been very like, I want to give back. Mm -hmm. Um, but I never knew it actually like people, like it worked. Like I had no idea, like people actually felt something from me. Like I always, that was my intention behind everything I do is to help people grow Mm -hmm. and just to be a better human every day. Um, but I thought that was just so cool. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm somebody, Sarah, like that's amazing to me. And there's a lot of like responsibility with that. Mm-hmm. And I take it very seriously because, um, I just, you know, I have bad days. Like I'm not always happy, but like, I have to wake up and choose to be happy for somebody else that I'm going to be impactful with the next day. So um, it's a kind of my why is that's my women's council why, but that's my life why um, is is really just to show other people what they don't see in themselves. That, that's so powerful. Thank you for sharing that because really our biggest job as leaders is to replace ourselves, right? Yeah, keep lifting as we climb, yeah. and. Um, and helping others. Um, and so I just love that. That's so special. And, and, um, that's why you are such a special leader. So thank you for what you do. And I know that you are cherished in the state of Michigan and, um, it has just been an absolute pleasure to shine a light on you and spill the tea about what you are doing, um, as a leader for the state of Michigan and, and really, uh, that ripple effect that goes out and it touches so many others. And like you said, to your point, you never know who you're affecting. And then, you know, maybe a year later, someone comes back and says, oh, that one word you said when you were talking, you you know how that affected my life. And you're like, what? You know, so thank you for doing what you do and keep on doing it. I mean, we're, we're lucky to have you. Stacey, thank you for doing all you're doing. And I mean, our value system can align more than anything. The lift as you climb. I mean, it's just, that's amazing. So I appreciate you you know, honoring me today with this opportunity. And thank you for sharing me with your community. Um, And I just really appreciate everybody's presence today. And I appreciate your time and all your outreach for putting this, putting this on. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for being on with Sip with Stacy. And I'm going to go ahead and put this after we're done. I'll put it on YouTube and then you can share it with your state. Perfect. Okay. Have a wonderful day, Chelsea. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you, Stacey. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.